when you hear rebuke, when you hear the Lord's opinion on that thing that you don't really, because it's, 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 it's usually something that you don't really want to hear, know that that ministration is mercy. That correction is mercy. It's easy to correct everybody. It's easy to say, I will say the truth. I will die for the truth. Until the prophet said, you are the one. So we're continuing along the lines of, you know, what it takes to really go into the new level of mercy. We've talked about, if you've paid attention to the Wednesdays, they, on the Wednesday service, we go a little bit deeper into the, I guess you would call it exegesis. We will go into the difference between the tender mercies and his enduring mercies and his great mercies, you know, and his sure mercies, right? So it's important that you, that you, um, that you stay plugged in for all this to really make sense. Make sure you understand the mercy we're talking about. Amen. We started off by talking about the new mercies. His mercies are new every morning. So what you understood two years ago or five years ago, or when you first gave your life to Jesus, what, what you understood as mercy, there, that's only one level. Pastor David mentioned last week about the foundations of faith. And one, of, one of them was repentance. Right? So there's new level of mercy. There's... <laughs> And for those who have followed Papa for a long time, you are well aware of the sure what? Mercies of whom? David. The sure mercies of David. Let us quickly read 2 Samuel chapter 12. Let us, because of time, we're going to trust one another to go back, as Papa said, to, to um, so we won't, because we only have about 20 minutes. So you will just have to go back and do your own study. Amen. Well, we'll just kind of point you in the right direction and make sure you're here on Wednesday because Wednesday we go deeper. <laughs> We've been talking about the spirit of Jezebel a lot. <laughs> and then on this morning spirit clinic, we'll talk about discipline. But if you're paying attention, everything is so like perfectly fitted like, uh, like some gears, you know. You need all these gears to get the, the motor running. It's, it's beautiful. So make sure you're paying attention, you follow. Uh, we are on YouTube, Reveal Word Broadcast, Facebook. Just go on there, listen to all the messages that are there. But those, you know, listening to the videos and whatnot, do not replace your own personal study time where you have your own notes, where you pray, you worship, and you say, Lord, teach me. Because God will want something specific for you to learn and to understand. So you have to have your own time where you sit down, hear the message, take, have your own notes, and do your own studies. Amen. Because God wants us to see new mercies. Amen. Second Samuel, we'll just read from 1 to 13 very quickly as a church. Let's go. You know what? My apologies. I said for time's sake. Let's go to 13. Amen. So you can read that uh, on your own time. Let's go to 13 and read together. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The, the Lord, Lord also has put, put away thy sin. sin, thou, thou shalt shall not die. die. I don't think you understand what, just, what you just read. Yeah. Read it again and tell me what you see. Because this, this is beautiful. God is so perfect. Someone just, two people, just tell me what, what do you see? What do you see? Huh? No, it's rebuke. What do you mean, mercy? <laughs> I'm, I know you're right. I'm joking. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So today we're talking about truth and the relationship between truth and mercy. Someone say truth, truth. And, mercy. and mercy. See, if you're gonna taste, if you're gonna taste the mercy of God, you must be someone who loves truth. You must be somebody who loves truth. Um, I'll read. We can stay on there, on there, but I'll read Psalms 85, verse 10 says, mercy and truth are met together. Mercy and truth are met together. 
Psalm 85 verse 10. 85 verse 10, yes. A righteousness and peace. We can go there. So, yeah, perfect. Let's read together. Mercy, Mercy and, and truth, truth are met together. And righteousness, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Now, on your own time, go back and read verse 7 and verse 8. You will see there's a relationship there where it says what? It says, show us mercy. Actually, let's quickly go there. It won't take long. We'll just read it quickly and move on. Verse 7 and verse 8. It says what? Go Show us mercy, mercy O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Next one. And then what? I will hear what God the Lord will speak, mm. for he will speak peace unto his people. Wow. And to his saints. But let them not, let them not turn again to folly. Mm -hmm. Show us mercy, and then I will hear what God will say. And then 10, it says, mercy and truth have met. Then Psalms 25 verse 10 says what? Says what? All, All what? the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Mercy and truth. Again, Psalms 85 10, mercy and truth have met. Psalms 25 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto whom? Unto such as keep, keep his covenant and, and his testimonies. testimonies. Now let's go back up to verse 5 and verse 6. And we'll see a similar relationship. What is the relationship between mercy, truth, and then from there, what does it say? Lead me in thy truth. Mm -hmm. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. And six? Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. So we read, we read, um, the previous one says, show us your mercy, and it says, I will hear. And then here it says, lead me. So it's, I will follow, and then mercy after. So you have hearing, then mercy. You have follow, lead, lead me, mercy. And then Psalms 57 verse 10, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. And Proverbs 3, verse 3. These you can write down. Actually, let's go there. Let's, let's read together um, Psalms 57, 10. Then afterwards, we'll read together Proverbs 3, verse 3. For thy, For thy mercy, mercy is great unto the heavens, the heavens, and thy truth and unto thy the clouds. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs 3, verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind Find them about thy neck. neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. Mm -hmm. And even here, we, know, we all know the scripture in verse 1, right? We can quickly look at um, Proverbs 3, 1. It says, keep the law in your heart. What? Keep the law in your heart. Keep the commandments. Amen. Amen. So what is this relationship between truth and mercy? It means that all those who will enjoy mercies are those who who love truth. Amen. Very, very apt question. Let's quickly um, look at John chapter 18, verse 37 to 38. What is truth? Pilate, therefore, John 18, 37, Pilate, therefore, said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest, you say that I am a king. And he says, To this end was I born, for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth does what? Here's my voice. Here's my voice. But now, what is what is what is, what is Pilate's response to the next verse? What does he say? But are you a king then? In verse thirty-eight, what does he say to what? What's the response? What is true? <laughs> what is truth? <laughs> what do you mean? 
what is truth? What is truth? And then he will afterwards cleanse his hands and wash, try to wash his hands away of guilt, you know. And you might be asking yourself, what is truth? What is truth? Um, and you say to yourself, well, we have the, the joker answer, Jesus is truth. <laughs> and of course, that's true. The Lord Jesus, he is truth. But what does it mean for you? How do you know what truth is? What is God trying to tell you? What is God trying to tell you? I think the important thing that we have to take away from today is that for your situation, for what you're dealing with right now, for some questions that you have in your mind, for your particular situation, God has something to tell you. And God has something that he wants you to know. And the only way that you will come to know the truth is by hearing. Let's quickly go to Isaiah 55, verse 3. Those who love the truth hear the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. The mercy of God is designated, designed to bless those who hear the truth, who hear, who listen, who receive the truth. What does it say? Mm -hmm. Even the sure mercies of David, incline your ear. Pay attention to what I have to tell you. Find out my opinion on this matter. The reason David en uh, en en uh, enjoyed so much mercy is because more than anybody, David cares what God thinks. More than anyone else, more than anybody else, he cared about God's personal opinion of him or of his situation and of a situation. It is what God thinks. And that goes back to what Papa was teaching us this morning about your value system. Your value system must be the truth. You value truth above everything else. So you can enjoy free, sweet mercy. What do you value? What do you value? So in your, in your life, can the Lord direct you? And tell you, don't do this, do that. Hmm? That's mercy. That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct. When you get a rebuke from the Lord, when you get some chastening from the Lord, do you know that that's mercy? That is mercy. And all the scripture gives you evidence. My favorite is, is Jonah. Is Jonah. We know the story of Jonah, right? Why did Jonah <coughs> run away when God said, go preach to Nineveh? Why? Why did he run away? Huh? Yeah. Let's quickly read Jonah. Where is it? Where is it? Let's quickly read Jonah chapter 4 verse 2. So, so, Jonah knew, he knows God. Because you see when, sometimes, sometimes when God sends you to preach to somebody and you're, maybe you have 
spiritual authority over somebody. If you're a parent, you have children. God has given you authority to correct. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, any other ministry. Papa has told us, it's not your job to go correcting everybody. But there are people that God has put under your care. Those you correct. So you might get very righteous and very, uh, what's the term? Is it pertinent? No, that's not, that's not a word. Imper impertinence? Righteous, righteous anger. Righteous indignation. Thank you. You get very, you see, and you say, yes, God, I said, go tell this person they're doing wrong. And you feel, yes, I'm going to lay it. I'm going to lay it on. I'm going to let them know God from heaven told me you are wrong. Yes. I knew it. I saw it from three days ago. For four months I've been watching you. God told me you, what you are doing is very incorrect. And I pray, I fasted, and God said, yes, this. And you are rejoicing. I'm going to lay it in. But Jonah knows the Lord a bit better. <laughs> Jonah said, no. What does he say? <laughs> I pray the O Lord. Was not this my saying? Dick, is this not what I said? Yeah. I knew this would happen. Go on. When I was yet in my country, therefore I fled before unto Tarshish. For I know that thou art a gracious God. So Merciful. let's say, he says, I knew what? You are a gracious God. I know that you are a, gr I just know you are gracious. I know you are merciful God. Slow to anger. Slow to anger. Great, Gr kindness. great kindness. Look at all these adjectives. <laughs> great, not just I know you're kind. I know you are great. And, a slow to anger. And repentest thee of the evil. I knew you would change your mind. Yeah. I, the I moment you it. said go preach to them, this fire and brimstone, all you want is for them to repent and you're going to turn around it's going to be all sweet. <laughs> And he was depressed. He said, I don't want to. <laughs> so he, he said he fled from God's presence onto the ships <laughs> because he didn't want them to repent because he knows God's mercy. So what does this tell us? If the prophet, of, if the prophet knows who God is, when you hear rebuke, when you hear the Lord's opinion on that thing that you don't really... Because it's, 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 it's usually something that you don't really want to hear. Know that that ministration is mercy. That correction is mercy. Let's go back to um, 2 Samuel 12 verse 13 that we, we started with. What does it say? The Lord also has put away thy sin. All he needed to do was confess. All he had to do was receive the rebuke. So that means that by the time the Lord spoke with prophet Nathan to send him to David. He sent mercy already ahead of him. Mercy already proceeded. Mercy already proceeded. So there's mercy available to you already. When we confess our sins, when we repent of what we've done wrong, Repent of rebellion, repent of turning our hearts elsewhere, of idolatry. When you repent, you know that your repentance is just drawing out the mercy that was already available. Amen. There's mercy available. However, you must love to hear that correction. Um, we, I'll round up here. This is, one of the, uh, this, is, this is one of the effects of the spirit of Jezebel. One of the things that the spirit of Jezebel, uh, one of the um, characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel is that Jezebel will never repent. They will never repent. What the spirit of Jezebel will do 
is when you tell Jezebel the truth, Jezebel will turn it back on you and say, you are not so holy yourself. <laughs> you are not so holy yourself. David had many options. I mean, when we look at 2 Samuel 24, David repented before even Prophet Gad came to him. <laughs> when the deed was done, what did he, what did he he, his heart smote him. That's somebody who values what God thinks. But David had many options. David could have responded to the rebuke in many ways. He could have justified himself. After all, God gave unto me all these, what's one more? David could have slain <laughs> Nathan, could have killed him. In those days, that was something that they did. <laughs> they killed any prophet that told them what they didn't want to hear. You know, today that might look different. You may not kill somebody, but you might assassinate their character. You might spread messages of rumors about them. You might do different things to destroy their power, destroy their ministry. A lot of tools. These days you don't have to go to war now. You can just go online and destroy somebody if you want. <laughs> you know? That is not the work of the children of God. In John chapter 8, verse 32. says, what, are, what, what did Christ say? I know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What does it say in verse 31? If you do what? Continue in my word? Hmm. But then when you jump to verse 40, what does he say? It says, now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. Now, so you, what, what is your response? And in there, it says, you, this is not the works of the children of Abraham. It says, you do your works of the father of the devil. So all those who attack, so there's different ways. There's, so it's not everybody who rejects truth is working in the spirit of Jezebel, right? Sometimes people are just dealing with their own selfishness, just love their sin. So when they hear truth, they just run away, Right? So they can continue. They don't want to hear it anymore. Just run away. Leave church because the church keeps telling them this is wrong or whatever the case is. Run away from home because the parents keep telling you this is wrong. Or all up in your space, whatever the case is. Do you know? But that does not, that's not the same thing as the spirit of Jezebel or those who are working. You know, that's not the same thing. What the spirit of Jezebel will do when, when, when the spirit of Jezebel hears the truth is they attack the truth teller and they look for ways to destroy the truth teller. So if you see those characteristics inside of you, you have to repent. You have to repent and you have to, you have to be delivered, you have to receive deliverance from that evil spirit. If every time you hear the truth, the, same, the thing, your instinct is to fire back at the person telling you, correcting you, then you have to purge yourself. Purge yourself. Amen. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Someone say, Father, I love your truth. Father, I love the truth. I love your word. I love your word. My ears are open. My ears are open. Lord, sanctify me. Lord, sanctify me through your truth. Through your truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. O oh Lord, oh Lord, renew my heart, renew my heart to love your truth. O oh Lord, oh Lord, open my ears, open my, ears, open my heart, open my heart to, understand to understand your truth. O oh Lord, oh Lord, soften my heart, soften my heart to, be a heart to be a heart of understanding, of understanding and a heart of flesh. Heart of flesh. I, rebuke I rebuke pride, 
I rebuke every haughtiness of spirit. I rebuke a proud heart. I reject stubbornness. I reject offense. I reject a stiff neck. I reject rebellion. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I love you. I love your word. I love your instruction. And I am confident in your love for me. I will walk in your love every day. I walk in your truth every day. And therefore, your goodness and your mercy, they follow me. They overshadow me. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You help me to love the truth. And I enjoy new mercies every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, now, if you have not received Jesus, if you don't know the Lord, uh, this is your opportunity to receive this mercy and to receive this gospel of truth into your heart. And it will change your life, it will change your heart, and you will, rec you will receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help you and teach you everything you need to know about the Lord Jesus. So if you have not done so, this is your opportunity to repent and turn your heart towards God. So wherever you are, you can put your hands up. Uh, for those of you watching online, you can join the prayer as well. And even those who are watching this at a later date, when it's not live, know that the power of God is still available to save you and change your heart. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I turn my heart, I my heart to you. To you. I, thank you I thank you for your sacrifice, your sacrifice where you were crucified and you died and you were buried for my sins. But I thank you that you resurrected. I in doing so, you justified me. By your sacrifice, I am cleansed. I am washed. I thank you for your divine mercy. Thank you for your great mercy. Thank you for the grace to repent and to turn me away from every sin, every iniquity, every darkness, everything that you don't like, Lord, take away from me. Holy Spirit, I receive you now into my heart. Help me daily to do the things that please God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now finally, if you need healing in any part of your body, place your hands on that uh, part of the body now, and we'll pray for you. As we do so, we'll receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, Amen. thank you for your mercy upon this soul, upon this person. Right now, we rebuke every infirmity, every sickness, uh, whatever the name is called. We uproot you, we curse you, cause you to dry out to your roots in the name of Jesus. Amen. That body is healed. You are renewed. You are regenerated. By the blood of Jesus, you are cleansed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me just quickly say a word, emphasize that scripture very well. I am really, really blessed by Minister Ebon's teaching. Come on, let's clap for Jesus for him. Come on, come on let's clap for Jesus for him. Amen. Amen. You see, I, 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 my heart is open to something spectacular in that particular verse that uh, Minister Ebon read. Amen. 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 He said that when the rebuke was coming, 
mercy came with it. It's amazing. Amen. He said, when the rebuke was coming, mercy came with the rebuke. Can you imagine God is already showing you mercy in rebuking you? That the only thing that it takes for you to see that mercy is to acknowledge that rebuke. That's all it takes. Amen. It's, a, it's, it's mixed together, but you may not even see it until you acknowledge that rebuke. David was so easy to turn from rebuke to mercy right away. It was so easy for him to acknowledge. That's why he said, I acknowledge my sin. You see, loving the truth is not the same as saying the truth. They're not the same thing. It's easy to tell everybody the truth until you are being rebuked. Until that truth is about you. It's easy to correct everybody. It's easy to say, I will say the truth. I will die for the truth. Until the prophet said, you are the one. Until truth. So loving the truth is what is called honesty. Honesty is not just saying the truth. What is called honesty, decep de deception is when you use lies to have what to gain advantage and make increase. Deception is a high class of lies. People lie, people deceive, but deception is used by Satan. They know lies, they use it for profit. Truth is liberty, is freedom. You have to love it, even if it's towards you. And you will never know you love the truth until you repent, until you are called, until you are rebuked, until you are reproved. It's only the place of rebuke that you can say, I really love the truth. It's okay to say everybody's a liar. Everybody's a fornicator. All pastors are wrong. They are liars. Until you are told the same thing. Amen. But one thing about <laughs> eating the truth because human beings don't love truth. They like to say it. They are activists. They are political activists. They are preachers. They are pastors. I mean, it's easy to preach the truth. It's very easy until the truth confronts you, until you are being chastened, until you are being rebuked, until you are being corrected. Then suddenly you go to self justification, you go to self denial. And then you go to self, you begin to self destroy yourself or hate the truth teller. When that is your attitude, you do not love the truth. And that is a bridge between you and the mercy. Because mercy and truth, they go together. Amen. They always come together. Many say, I've already through mercy and through mercy and through. When God is saying the truth, as soon as you acknowledge it, the door of mercy opens up. You don't need 10 years to repent. It takes just acknowledging, receiving, loving the truth. And say, Lord, you are right. Someone say, Lord, you are always right. Say, so Lord, you are always right. Lord, you're always right. That's when you see mercy. And that's the life of David. The day you come to say, Lord, you are always right. When you are shown the scripture. I say, Lord, you are right. I was wrong. And it's genuine. That's where mercy flows. Amen. But if you don't love the truth, you hate the truth. What you do, is the consequence in the Bible is so huge. The Bible says in Romans 1.28, it says, because they did not love, they did not retain the knowledge of God in there. He said God gave them up to a reprobate mind to do and to believe that which is not convenient. Thessalonians said because they did not love the truth, God gave them up to believe lie. Find that scripture for me. Amen. Verse 10. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 or 2 10. Amen. Because they did not love the truth, you will be deceived. You would love lies. 
People are loving lies all over the world. The problem is not because of the lies. They embrace lies. They love lies. A whole generation of people in America are under the spell of lies. They are listening to lies. Then they love it. Because they do not love the truth. Somebody make a love of the truth in Jesus' name. Yeah. You must love the truth. That's why this communion is very important. You have to do that to yourself and say, Lord, even if the truth hurts, tell it to me, Lord. Even if it's painful. I remember when I started to help people out of some issues. I couldn't believe how long it takes for them to understand something so simple. I, 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 I said, how can you not see that this is wrong? It's a great disease if you don't love the truth. Let's read that place from the Thessalonians. What? 210. Let's all read together, please. Let's go. If you are there, let's go. Test, second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. Let's go. 210 to 11. Let's go. Church, can we all read together, Lord? For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Strong delusion. God, who will send them strong delusion? God. Who will send them strong delusion? God. God will send them strong delusion. That they should what? They should not believe. They should that they should what? Believe a lie. They should what? Believe a lie. Ah, say God forbid. God forbid. That they should believe lies. Why will God send somebody strong delusion to follow liar? Verse 11. That, ten, which, yeah. Yeah. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Because the they receive not the love of the world, of the, truth. the truth, that they may be saved. They receive not the love of the truth. That's why God said, when you enter a place, they do not receive you. Just shake the dust of your feet. He said, what shall be their judgment? That will not be your portion. On them. May you love the truth. Huh? May you love correction. On them. I say, may you love correction. On them. May you love to hear it. Huh? May you love discipline. Huh? Somebody say louder, amen. Amen. Say to me, say, Pastor. Oh, come on, church. Say, Papa. Call me any name. Say, Pastor. Oh, church. Are you awake this morning? Say, Papa. Say, Pastor. Say, my brother. Tell me the truth every Sunday. I will not, I will not dislike you. I will hold you to your word. Amen. Say it again. Say, Papa. Say, Pastor Ulu, say, my brother, preach the truth for me. Really? Are you ready? Let's have another one hour service now. Let's continue preaching now. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will love the truth. Amen. You will not be deceived in this life. You will not believe lies. You are separated from liars. May God give you a heart that loves the truth, even if it's about you. In Jesus' name.